the Americas where they were working in labor in the fields with sugar, so they were mostly men, whereas most of the slaves from East Africa were going to Islamic societies that wanted women to work in the harems and to work in the, the household. So what that meant was there weren't enough women, African women in the Northeast, and there weren't enough African men in the West, and that caused kind of a demographic problem for Africa. So you had that issue. Of course, you just also had a lot of misery. All these poor people were being sold into slavery. But despite that, some African kingdoms became very powerful through the slave trade. They were, by selling slaves, they got money to buy guns, which helped them make even stronger governments. So that's another um, issue. The, uh, and one thing I just want to mention is the scale. Remember, there were more Africans than Europeans coming to the Americas. Right? There were more Africans than Europeans coming to the Americas, and there was a lot of them. It's just the work they did was so terrible, uh, most of them didn't reproduce. It was actually cheaper to buy more slaves rather than allow slaves to reproduce. So you bring in lots of men, you work them to death, they die, you just bring in more. So any questions there? Okay, in terms of what regions were most slaves in the Americas taken to and why? Right, uh, this is the slide. Only 4% go to North America. Most right, are going to go to 45% to Caribbean, 46% to Brazil. So most are not going to the, United, to the area that will become the United States. Most are actually coming there. Uh, what are they coming there to do? Sugar. 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 Yeah. And I just I wanted us to, to kind of remember that because uh, our image of slavery is, is dominated by what happened in the American South, but we want to remember that's not the only kind of slavery, that you had another kind that's going on here, uh, which isn't focused on cotton, but is focused on sugar. Just as an aside, by the way, slavery was legal in Brazil until like 1891. Uh, really lasted a long time there. Okay, people ask this question, what is mercantilism? This is a fairly easy one to answer because it's right there on a slide where it says the rise of mercantilism. And this is another one where I maybe would say which of these is not a reason, and I'll give you three actual reasons, and then one that's actually... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I would give you three real reasons and then a false reason. You have to pick the false reason, because which of these is not a reason, or which of these is not a definition of mercantilism. Um, for example, Mayor Mercantilists thought there was only a limited amount of wealth in the world. That wealth was linked to natural resources. So if I get that wealth, you don't have it. If you get that wealth, I don't have it. You win, I lose. I win, you lose. We can't both win. And part of this, they emphasize, since you want to get territory, you want colonies. And um, so you want to get as many colonies as you can, and that led to wars uh, over these colonies. And you, these colonies existed to increase the wealth of the mother country. So you want that colony to only trade with the mother country. So the example I like to give, Argentina had beef, uh, and they were a colony of Spain. The Spanish would not allow the Argentinians to sell beef to Britain. Even though the British were willing to pay more money, the Argentinians weren't allowed to do it. They were only allowed to trade with Spain. And this led people to obtain colonies to get natural resources. And this is one reason why governments would support things like the British East Indies companies or the Dutch East India Company, uh, because they want to go out and explore to get these colonies so they could get money. And that's a theory of mercantilism. Okay, what advances did the rise of merchant capitalism lead to? Again, Um, this is another case where I just have a handy little list. We talked about banking and credit, this idea of shares and shipping, right, where you would share the risk by dividing ownership of a ship, and joint stock companies. I should have added uh, stock market because that rises out of that, but I neglected to, so that won't be there. But th so you can see there, that's a really easy one that maybe there would I would ask you, okay, here's uh, four, you know, which of these does not belong? Because there's three right there, it's easy for me to add a fourth fake one. The same is also true, people ask me who capital is, what capitalism is. And there's, of course, my hero, Scrooge McDuck. Um, I hope people have heard of him, or my jokes will make no sense. Um, remember, capitalism, again, you see three things. Uh, this may be uh, which of these is not, question which of these does not belong. Remember, private ownership of capital, that, and capital is a means of doing business. And that's, for example, money, machines, or ships are examples of capital. 
So private ownership. Remember, I, I gave the example in football. Green Bay Packers are not an example of capitalism because they're owned by the city of Green Bay. The Indianapolis Colts are an example of capitalism because they're owned by Ers what's his name, Erske. Um, so it has to be private ownership, not owned by a state or a government or the community. It has to be owned privately by someone like Scrooge McDuck. Um, remember, capital and labor are different. Uh, there's a division between the two. The person um, who the labor does not own the capital used to make money. So a baker baking his own bread is not a capitalist. Right? Baker baking his own bread to sell is not a capitalist because he owns the bakery and he's the labor. However, when the baker is working for Scrooge McDuck, uh, Scrooge McDuck Enterprises, um, he is, that's a case of capitalism because Scrooge McDuck is not baking, only the baker is baking using the oven that Scrooge McDuck owns. So capital and labor are divided. Um, and the person who gets the profit is not the person doing the work, it's the person who owns the capital. So again, to use that example, uh, Scrooge McDuck owns the oven, he pays the baker a wage, but the profit from selling the bread does not go to the baker, it goes to Scrooge McDuck. So did, is that clear? Any questions there? Okay. I'm not sure if the Disney references are helping. So I teach a history of comics and anime class, so I always like to, to bring in cartoons whenever I can. Hopefully they make things clearer rather than confusing things. Um, that's right, we did that. How were the two centralized states of England and France different? And this is one thing I, I want to emphasize. Sometimes the way I ask the question will help you answer that question correctly. So for example, on the test, there may be a question that says, which of the following statements about England and France are true, which of the five statements are true. And I may say, they were different because, what well, you should know is, as soon as you see, or I'm sorry, they may, one may say they are the same because. You should know instantly that that's a wrong answer. You should cross that out instantly because the question I ask is, how were they different? All right, so you wanna pay attention to the, sometimes in the review question itself, you have a clue. All right, so if, if you see one, an answer that says they're the similar, you know it's false because I'm asking you how are they different. So starting with France, right? How, what was who was the guy? The main guy talked about who ruled France, right? Louis the Fourteenth was Louis the Fourteenth elected? No. How, well, how did he justify his right to rule? Right. Well, he pointed to this idea that he was divine, right? The sun god, and what did um, so it was, he had this idea of divinity? And it was called divine, divine right, right, right. Divine right, and I think I bolded that in the, um, the PowerPoint. Whenever you see a bolded term, that's one you really want to focus on. So he had this idea of divine right. I rule because God put me in charge. And because of that, he also had royal, begins with an A, absolutism, right? God chose me so I can do whatever I want. You have to listen to me. So that's, that's how, why he's in charge, okay? Who was Robert Walpole? What was his big deal? If we look at the terms, oops. Okay, Robert Walpole. Didn't he, like, I remember watching him in the video. Yeah. He like came to power somehow. Right, did he, did he kill a bunch of people? No, he was right. nice. Right, he was nice to people, right? And what, what kind of people was he nice to? You remember the members of? Parliament. Parliament, right, exactly. He was elected. He was an elected official because and he was connected with England. England is a democracy, right? And that's how these things kind of connect. I'm glad you mentioned that you remembered from the video, right? So the centralized state of France was, this, was a monarchy where the king had divine right, royal absolutism. In England, it was very different. It was a democracy that had the idea, not of divine right, but of this thing called popular sovereignty. Right? The power came from the people. In England, you ruled not by the grace of God. You ruled by the power of the people. Right? So in England, you had this democracy with elected officials and an idea of popular sovereignty that, pop, uh, that it comes from the people. And in France, it came from God through the king, and you can't question the king. And the king can just do whatever he wants. Now, one thing, and this was in, this was this question was coming from the video that was um, 
remember we had the snow day, the videos I asked people to watch. Um, we had this question, why did the centralized state of England defeat the centralized state of France in the Seven Years' War? Anyone that has watched the video, can they answer the question? Okay. Right, make sure you watch it. <laughs> but one of the key things was this issue of trust. Remember, France is bigger than England. France had more people. It actually had a larger economy. It had a bigger army and a bigger navy. But no one trusted the French king with money. No one would loan money to the French king because the French king wouldn't pay back his loans. You're not going to loan money to someone who's not going to pay you back. It's a bad risk. In contrast, England was a democracy. And remember, one of the key things about the democracy, we talked about this, people were willing to pay higher taxes because they had a say in how their money was being spent. Right? King of France just said, give me money and uh, just give it to me and I'll decide how it's spent. In England, though, you got to help decide how that money was spent. So English people trusted their government more because they had a say in their government. They were sure that their government would pay them back because they were their own government. Right? If the government didn't pay them back, they would vote in a government that would. So it was because democracy led to trust. And trust allowed the English to borrow money from their own people. That's what a bond is, by the way. A bond is kind of a loan. Right? When you buy a government bond, you're, buying a, um, you're, you're giving the government a loan. And that's what the, British, the English did, was they had a lot of loans from their own people in the form of bonds. And that gave them the money they needed to build ships, to build armies, and to defeat the French. So it's that issue of democracy and trust. So any questions there? Okay, how are science and technology different? Okay, um, what's the question word that is associated with science? Right, there's a, well, there's a pie question, right? Who, what, where, why, how? What's the question word? Why. Yeah, science is why things work. Science is why things work. So technology then is how things work. Can you have technology without science? Yes. You can build a bridge without knowing the physics behind building a bridge. But with science, and remember we define science as using like direct observation and the scientific method to understand why things work. With science, you can build a steam engine or a rocket ship, or a tank, or a car. You can't do that with only technology. So you could do amazing things with technology. China, I gave the example, had fabulous technology. For example, they figured out gunpowder. But the Chinese invention of gunpowder did not lead to modern chemistry. Right, so the advantage of science is that it allows you to do new things you couldn't do before because you understand the principles underneath it. Okay, why were the Americans able to gain independence from Britain? All right, I gave, here's the slide. This was one of those ones that was online, so please make sure you, you watch it. But there, again, helpfully, are the four reasons for American victory. Uh, for one thing, the British had to come across the Atlantic Ocean. That's really difficult. That's really far away. So they had problems with um, supplying their army. Logistics is just a military term for supply. Right? They had to, how do they get their soldiers food? How do they get them weapons? How do they get them ammunition? Supply. The Americans also mastered guerrilla and conventional warfare. Right? When I was young, we were taught, oh, the Americans hid behind the trees while the British wore red uniforms and, and they were dumb. And that's not true. 